Oh, well that's not good. So today we're going to talk about breaker panels, specifically for new homeowners. So if you have a problem with your breaker panel and you can't figure out how to reset it, then stick around, watch this video, and perhaps we'll save you a service call. So we're just going to take the wire, gently pull down. The cord is pretty much melted together. So there we have our end, our finished end with our... Now obviously you've come here because you have no power to a circuit and you've already checked your panel and you think that all of your breakers are on. Well, maybe they're not and we're going to show you just what we mean. Now in addition to breaker panels, we're also going to talk about fuse panels. So watch till the end because we're going to show you about fuse panels at the very end of the video. Now there are four different major kinds of breaker panels. There are square D, there is Eaton or formerly known as Cutler Hammer, there is Siemens, or formerly known as ITE, or also Murray in the United States, or Murray, however you want to pronounce it. And there's Federal Pioneer, also known as Federal Pacific, which is now discontinued, or a discontinued product. You can still get breakers for them, but they don't release the panels on the market anymore because they just don't meet expectations, criteria, or they are uh, just discontinued for reason, legal reasons that I don't want to say. So, okay. You've got no power to a circuit. You've already gone to your panel. You've checked out the entire circuit board. You think that they're all on. The first thing that I want to tell you, and I'm going to show you these four breakers. Once I show you these four breakers, then I'm going to show you the panel, and I'm going to show you different variations, which you may think that the breaker isn't tripped and is tripped. We're also going to demonstrate a short circuit to show you what the sound sounds like when it trips. So, at that point, you're going to need to call an electrician. Now, quite simply, these are the four breaker types that I was talking about. On the right, we have Eaton or a Cutler Hammer. Second over, we have Siemens or ITE. Then we have Square D. And then we have Federal Pacific or Federal Pioneer or FPE, whatever you want to call it. Now, all of these breakers in the up-down position obviously face down for off and up for on. That's not hard to figure out. However, and I'm gonna show you this panel. Okay, so one of the first most important rules that you need to know as a homeowner is all of the breakers are on when they're to the center of the panel. When they're to the outsides of the panel, that means they're off. Now, here's the tricky part. If you turn the camera sideways, because the panel is mounted sideways, then that means that on is down on this top part, and on is up on this bottom part. So that may confuse you. Believe it or not, we've had a lot of people that were confused over that. So depending on what your electrician has done, they may have mounted your panel sideways in your home. Usually for space restrictions. That's why it's usually mounted sideways in a small basement to get the panel to the proper height. Now panels can also be mounted upside down. So you may have the main breaker on the bottom or you may have the main breaker on the top in addition to the panel being mounted horizontally. Sometimes electricians mount them upside down for, for reasons that it really depends on the install. So if we're coming up with an underground circuit sometimes or an underground feed will come up into the bottom of the panel just to get the proper height. Um, sometimes if the meter base outside or the meter that you have on the outside of your house, sometimes that works out that we need to mount them upside down. However, they are all approved to be mounted in any which direction except for diagonal. Nobody mounts them diagonal, of course. But the labels need to correspond with the panel. So if we mount the panel upside down, then the labels need to be turned around so they match. Now, one of the other things that I want to mention is there are a couple of different kinds or variations of breakers, okay? So you have a full-size breaker, which is a single pole 15 amp breaker, and then you have mini breakers. So if you notice, this single pole breaker is the same as two of these minis. So these are called space savers. So oftentimes, you can save room in your electrical panel by having these installed so you can add more capacity, which is great. The thing is with these, they can trick you. And the reason I can say they can trick you is because 
you see this little joiner tab here in the center sometimes that breaker when it's on will trip and I'm going to show you very closely here so you see how that's not coming all together at the same time one side of that may be tripped and the other side may not be for a variety of reasons so that is one of the first things you need to check that this joiner tab is in fact all the way up so the breaker is all the way up into the on position and you can clearly hear that click when they click off and when they click on now one of the biggest things that we always tell our client when you're resetting a breaker if you just go to reset it sometimes the back of it will want to pull out so what we recommend is always sticking your thumb or your index finger when you're doing what we call a hard reset. So a hard reset is if the breaker's tripped and you need to come back all the way to the off position. You need to give quite a pull on it. And then all the way back to the on position. When we say we recommend going all the way to the on position and then all the way to the off position, sometimes breakers will trip and they don't look like they're tripped. They will just simply fool you. In fact, they've fooled us before in the past. So you need to go through every single breaker, especially if your panel's not marked well, and shut each one off and each one back on doing a hard reset. This is something that you can do as a homeowner before you call an electrician to make sure. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna show you what a short circuit sounds like. the dreadful trip breaker. So each time we do that, that's not good. The breaker isn't meant to continuously be tripped. So after two or three times, it's time for you to call your electrician. If you have a serious short circuit like that, then yes, you need to call an electrician. Each time the breaker gets tripped like that, or from a dead short, it weakens the internal mechanism in the breaker, so that's not good. So it's always a good idea when you call your electrician to recommend to have the breaker changed even once they fix the short circuit. So in conclusion, breaker panels can be, well, somewhat deceiving. It's hard to tell when they're really tripped. So make sure that you check that before you call for a service call. Make sure that it is actually in the on position because sometimes it will trick you. Now for more good informational videos like these, don't forget to like and subscribe. And in the beginning of this video, I mentioned about fuse panels. If you're having a problem with a fuse panel, or you can't tell that a fuse is blown, then just click on the link up here, and it'll take you right to it. That's it for today, guys. We'll see you next time, and stay safe.